A radicular cyst is a cyst which has developed from embryonic tissue remains, usually due to a dentogenous inflammational stimulus. A cyst is a cavity in tissue enclosed within the skin or epithelium, which may consist of several chambers and which is usually filled with fluid or pulp. Cysts may grow in size more or less quickly, though their growth behavior is, with a few exceptions, restrictive and not aggressive. By not aggressive, we mean that the surrounding structures, such as, for example, blood vessels or nerves, can be blocked but not damaged. A radicular cyst develops from leftover tissue, known as epithelial remains, from tooth development. Usually, the remains of cells from tooth development, which are called dental lamina, remain in our jawbone. These tissues can, when stimulated by inflammation, for example due to a dead dental nerve, or perhaps a badly done root treatment, be excited into growth. The result may be the development of a cyst. Here you can see a video of the removal of a radicular cyst. Years ago the patient fell and in doing so injured his front left incisor. In this case the patient didn't go to the dentist. Over years his tooth migrated away from the center line and became discolored. The origin of this particular development can be seen in this x-ray. The dental nerve was injured in the accident and then died. The putrid tissue caused an inflammatory reaction in the bone. This inflammational stimulus gave the growth stimulus to the embryonic epithelial remains of the dental lamina. A radicular cyst ultimately developed. That's the dark spot in the x-ray. The cyst then pushed the tooth away from the middle. In this case, the treatment consists of the removal of the cyst. The mucosa has already been carefully folded to one side. Now the bone above the cyst will be removed carefully. The entire cyst pod can now be seen. Next, the cyst is spooned out by means of a specific instrument. It's very important that the entire contents are meticulously removed. If any parts of the cyst remain, it could cause a new cyst to develop, even years later, a so-called relapse. Since the problem in this case is very large, at the end of the operation, replacement bone material will be used. This should only be done when there are no signs of inflammation and the area can be cleaned out completely. Finally, the mucosa is stitched. Twice yearly x-ray checks will confirm if the treatment was successful or not. You can find out more about the removal of cysts in the video entitled Cystectomy. An alternative to this operation could be the opening of the cyst first. You can find out more in the video entitled Cystostomy. As a rule, cysts left untreated in the mouth, jaw, or facial area will grow in size over the years, and this will lead to particular local complications sooner or later. The operational risks associated with this procedure are negligible when the surgeon is experienced. Nonetheless, there could be complications occasionally, which could then possibly make further measures necessary. With every further necessary measure, further complications, which could even be life-threatening, may once again crop up. For the purposes of our discussion, we will only mention the special complications particular to the removal of radicular cysts. These include Injury to the surrounding structures, such as nerves, cheeks, blood vessels, tooth roots, and teeth, with the relevant consequences. Incorrect cystectomy of malignant masses, which should be properly removed along with added tissue for safety. The possibility of wound infection. A broken jaw. Leaving cyst fragments behind, which could cause a recurrence of the cyst as a result. Fortunately, due to improvements in medicine in the last decade, such complications are very unlikely to occur.